bait. Well, amazingly, the uh, current single rate, and I'm reading from that memo from 92, the current single rate tax is actually more progressive for all categories of incomes below the $27,850 than the old graduated rate. We proved that the low income pays less, and I think you actually saw that on the charts of the income tax. And what can we do? I think in another year or so, we could go back to the 5%, ask the voters to go back to it. But the other thing is the trying to convert our Constitution that we delete some of the things in it. We can change some of the issues, how we fund things, and the different programs, the different departments. But we could lay off every state employee in the state, and we would not balance the budget. Now, that's pretty scary. It would take 50,000 jobs, new jobs per year, for three years to get the economy back where it was. This is going to be a slow process, and we're going to go through hard times, but we have to do something in this state. And I would ask you to read as much as you can about the condition of the state. What needs to be funded, what doesn't. Bring, bring ideas to your legislature. They can do some things, not everything, but it's going to be difficult. We probably should put the sales tax back at 3%. For years it was there, and we lowered it in times of plenty. I would rather temporarily reduce taxes than permanent. And I always remember during the Depression, and this is a little tidbit from history, the state income tax was passed in this state in 1937. And 92% of it went to fund education because property tax was onerous. When talking about what changes to make, the first thing I'd ask is that having arrived here tonight, having heard a little bit of this, that you keep an open mind and keep investigating because we need to approach this honestly. Now, if you think that a one-sided presentation from one group with an agenda is keeping an, an open mind, giving you enough information, I think you need to change that, please. There are a lot of options besides just saying, it looks like we're under, underfunded on a per-income basis. Um, and we've come up with idea after idea for the state that would free up money, make the government work a whole lot better. And you can find that on the Independence Institute website called the Citizen's Budget. We can do the things a lot smarter. For instance, we found out in doing that budget that in business services for school districts across the nation, Colorado is more than double the national average. And we don't know why, but it certainly bears investigation. And that's stuff like planning and payroll and, and uh, research and the like. And if you cut that in half, you free up $112 million. That closes 10% of the budget hole right there. We have other suggestions that close the whole thing. And it's, it's that openness, that willingness to see that the citizens out there don't have unlimited funds just to say, by golly, Carol, you're right, we need to just turn over a whole lot more money. Because when we turn over a whole lot more money, we expect to get a whole lot more services or better services. And we haven't talked about that outcome-based, priority-based budgeting. You know, in our small business, we have a saying that you have to reinvent yourself every 18 to 24 months to survive and, and thrive, and obviously that's not possible for the state or, or, or the school district. At, at the city, a much larger $100 million a year business, we're, we're obviously successful. We've added money to our fund balance six years in a row. We've had no layoffs and not one hour of furlough, but we recognize that, that nothing is forever. 
and every day we talk about new economic realities and we talk about something I call survivability of our business model, which is a sales tax based. It's, it's based on people buying stuff. And uh, we, we, ask, we ask very tough questions. Uh, there are no sacred cows. When we talk about employment, the police department sits at the, sits at the table with, with family services and public works and community resources. Every day we look for efficiencies. Just today, a, uh, a manager came in, he or she, I won't say which, said, you know, did an analysis of something. There's a little process, a new process that we've been working on for a few years. We've gotten to the point where it's efficient, and, and this manager believes that, that two people can now do the job of, of three people. Um, every day we look for collaboration uh, across jurisdictions and, and across agencies. Um, I think the school district is on the right path in terms of, be, of beginning the community conversations like we're doing here tonight and doing a really in-depth analysis of their, of their facility needs, et cetera. But ultimately, the, the likelihood of any success here, uh, short-term or long-term, short-term in, in an election, long-term sustainability of a new financial model uh, will, would, will be enhanced if the public believes that every rock has been looked under. Um, the business model has been has been analyzed, and uh, nothing is sacrosanct. So I would encourage very creative, dynamic, out of the box thinking. Speaking to the mayor's point, and I think reinforcing uh, the fact that great leaders produce great results. And I would ask, uh, probably by telling the story of what we've dealt with at Go Crown Foundation, we serve approximately 20,000 kids throughout the metro area, primarily Jefferson County. And through great leadership that involves city council, the county commissioners, open space, is, and most importantly, the school district, uh, we were able to locate our foundation at uh, Alameda and Harlan. We're able to serve the kids of Jefferson County as well as uh, many of the other kids. I think we have become innovative. I think we need to become more creative and we cannot stand pat in how we serve the kids of uh, Colorado and primarily of Jefferson County. The one thing I can tell you through our life experiences with my wife and I educating five kids in Jefferson County, they were well prepared. They did get out of uh, high school well prepared. They are ready to meet the demands of higher education. Uh, unfortunately, they all went out of state and we paid twice as much to go out of state for that. But the good part is, is that we do have something that works. Can it work better? Yes, I'm sure it can. As the mayor said, we gotta continue to look for these efficiencies and these tweaks. But it also is not a system that we should throw away and start over. It is a system that does produce, I think, more great results than inadequate or poor results. We need to continue to have these dialogues that we have now. And more importantly, we need to elect open-minded people that serve really the best in all of us. And I think we should not look, as Pin pointed out, all on one side or all on the other. We really need people that are going to solve problems. Thank you. We're almost, we're almost done, and uh, time to uh, present a couple of questions to the panel, and I might be bold to direct them to uh, a couple uh, of the panel members that uh, we've received from our audience, because there's some important business to be had. There's a lot of cookies out there that uh, are waiting, and, and I'm going to volunteer. I'm going to be bold and volunteer. Uh, Carol and, and Penn, Norma, uh, Bob, and, and Ray to be available to you to discuss if you have some questions you want to relay them directly one-on-one -on -one. as we exit the evening we can talk out in the hall. Uh, how's that for a bold statement? So I, I want to, uh, th there are a number of questions you can imagine. This is uh, uh, an audience that is engaged and interested and I would like to direct this to uh, Norma Anderson, if you could explain what is Amendment 23. We, we, there's a lot of jargon that was used this evening, and so okay. I'm going to ask you guys to yeah. talk about a couple right. of the constitutional provisions. Amendment 23 was put in the Constitution by the voters. It was an initiative process to guarantee 
funding for K-12 education and what it did. And I sort of have to explain the, the Finance Act, but there's a base dollar amount that goes, that's the same, that goes to every child in the state. The inflation was put on the base. Then there's three modifiers to that base that scoot the numbers up. The inflation was not put on the modifiers. It was put only on the base. And it was uh, inflation plus 1% for 10 years. Uh, the 11th year is coming up. So they still do that. They follow that. It also put inflation on the categorical factors, which is special ed, gifted and talented, transportation. And there's one more, and I can't remember what it is. I've been gone too long. But that's what Amendment 20, 23 is. It's to give funding to K-12 education. Thank you. Okay, uh, we're going we're gonna to move on. Uh, I'm going to uh, ask this question of uh, uh, Penn. Is there any way to provide adequate funding for government programs uh, without eliminating Tabor, uh, the Tabor Amendment or the Gallagher Amendment? We've been very polite not to disagree with one another up here, but I've got to say that I believe Senator Anderson's view that the Constitution is at the base, the fault, is an antiquated one. The Taxpayers' Bill of Rights keeps government from growing too rapidly, and it has several different aspects. It's not just vote on, um, not just voting on tax increases, but we haven't bumped up against those uh, maximums. We haven't bumped up against those limitations since there's been a 2001 recession, there's been a 2007 recession, there's been referendum C to, to put it in abeyance. So really we haven't had the Taxpayers' Bill of Rights be in effect at all this, for most of this decade. And so there is no conflict right now with Gallagher. As we get into a growth pattern, then you'll see revenues bounce back for the state level and the local level, and it'll be once again a good idea to keep Tabor there so that we don't end up building that base and finding that expectation year after year, such as New York and New Jersey and California did, and got into real problems when they had a downturn. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to pose this to, uh, to Bob Murphy. Uh, the question is, how much money, and if you could relate Lakewood's experience, as an example, but the question